Hi you guys, welcome back to our channel. Today I am going to be baking some chicken thighs because Babe wanted some. And chicken thighs to me are like a really messy meat to prepare. And I'm going to show you how I prevent cross-contamination in our kitchen. So basically all you see me doing right here is taking the packaging and putting it into a plastic bag after I dump the meat into the bowl that I'm going to be preparing the chicken in. That is one of the safest ways for me to go ahead and uh, make sure that I don't contaminate like every single surface in my kitchen you guys and I don't like touching meat period especially not chicken and I know I'm not some super chef or anything like that because chefs don't have a problem with touching anything but I just cook a little bit in the kitchen so don't judge me this is how I do it in my kitchen okay the next thing I do is I take it over to the sink in the bowl that I'm washing everything off in and if you see the water that is coming into the sink I have it going into the bowl at a slow um, pace. It's not all bouncing around in the bowl and popping water everywhere. That's another way to help prevent the um, salmonella and E. coli and whatever else comes off of chicken from bouncing around all over the sink in the kitchen. This is kind of disgusting, guys. So, you know, feel free to turn your eyeballs if you need to right now. But take note um, how I'm turning the water on and off. Yes, I'm going to clean the kitchen even more thoroughly with the sink area more thoroughly once I'm done cleaning the kitchen but just to not contaminate it even further I use my elbow to turn the sink on and off and here all I'm doing is just rinsing the chicken off I did use salt and vinegar to clean the chicken and if you see the remnants in the bowl I picked up all the fat that was on the pieces of chicken so far so then once I go ahead and do that, you're just going to see me dumping everything into the same plastic bag that I put the packaging in from the chicken. And then, babe, she's doing me a favor, and she is going to be ever so polite to take these right on out our kitchen door and right on down the stairs and dump them right on into the garbage, you guys. I do not like letting meat wrappers stay inside the house because if it's kind of warm or humid, when you wake up in the morning, that stuff really stinks really bad. So I usually take everything right out of the house as soon as I take it out of the packaging. The blood stinks the next day. So then the next thing I'm doing here is I had filled up this bowl with hot soapy water and then I'm just pouring it down the sink really quickly and I'm setting it off to the side. And the first order of business to start cleaning this area so that um, I get all the nasty bloody chicken out is I just squeeze a whole bunch of, you know, dishwashing liquid into the sink. And then I take a rag and then I do the same. I put some dishwashing liquid onto that. And then I take that rag with the hottest water that my hands can stand. And then I go around the sink uh, really well with warm, soapy water scrub. Make sure that I'm getting down in the drain. I'm making sure that I get the drainer, the strainer, whatever you want to call it. I'm making sure that I'm cleaning that really well with the dish rag as well. Again, this is just the first step, you guys. Every time I make any sort of meat, this is the process that I go through to clean out the sink and make sure that whatever we wash after this, it's not contaminated and we don't end up getting sick. And so I just repeat this for both sides of the sink. Even though I didn't clean the chicken on the other side of the sink, there's still a possibility of when I was rinsing it or putting water into the bowl to clean it, that some of those um, water drops popped on over to that side. So I'm also making sure that I get that side of the sink and um, rinsing everything off really well. Again, this is the hottest water um, that I can stand um, and actually even hotter water just to rinse out the sink. Okay. And so then the next thing you guys see right here, bleach water. That is my number one a spoon coon in the kitchen bleach water. So all I'm doing, once I cleaned out the sink, I did go ahead and I got a new dish rag. I did not use the same dish rag. I went ahead and threw that in the laundry. And I washed the two dishes that I had left, which was the chicken bowl that I used to rinse the chicken off in, and then the knife that I used to cut all the fat off in, off of the chicken in. And then 
I'm just putting it off to the side once I go ahead and give it a nice rinse and cleaning. And so that's what it looks like right now. And then you guys see me taking the bleach water. I'm using the bleach after I have taken a paper towel and then just dried all the water out of the sink and off the sides. And then I'm using that. I'm spraying down the entire kitchen area. I also did the island as well. Now the towel that I just used to um, clean the bowl and the knife with, it's a new towel. So I'm not going to throw this one out. All I'm going to do is disinfect this in the microwave for two minutes and 20 seconds. That's how I disinfect my towels, um, you know, most of the time if I don't need to wash them. And then here, after I let the bleach sit on the counters for, I think that was probably about two minutes, I go in with a paper towel and I just get up all of the bleach. So that's how I prevent cross-contamination in my kitchen when I'm making any sort of meat. You guys, thank you for watching this video. Give us a thumbs up. Leave us some comments below, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.